You shouldn't be so fixated on hair loss if you truly are going down the PED performance route. What is up everyone, it's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907water.com, keep on code Russo. ASMR spritz, intelligent elephant carbon, here's your noises. All other discounts in the pinned comment and description below. Today, I'm ranting about hair loss, muscle building, performance enhancing drugs, steroids. Pick one. Instead of all, oh, well, which, which compounds are hair safe? How do I save my hair while I'm on? Just go down a singular path. There's biohacking for vanity, AKA the hair loss, all the cosmetic things you can do via drugs, via surgeries. That's one separate side of biohacking. There's biohacking for longevity. You know, controlled starvation, all the longevity compounds, all the longevity supplements. And then there's performance, right? So you're getting all the compounds around muscle building. You're not giving a fuck about the side effects associated with that. The real main annoyance for me is that people want to use steroids, use SARMs, which are known to cause hair loss. There's very few of them that don't cause hair loss. What, there's S4, DECA, NPP, maybe Trestolone. And when we look at the elite hair loss YouTubers, they've tried men only, they've tried DECA only. Like they've, they've tried all these ways to mitigate hair loss while continuing their regime of maintaining their perfect hair. And it just seems like this crappy balancing act of their foot is half in the water with the PEDs and they're realistically a vanity biohacker and I got nothing against that. But there's these guys who DM me every day, hey, what's the most hair safe cycle? There's no fucking hair safe cycle. It's like, are you genetically prone to that? Yes. Okay. Well, that's a big side effect that is a whole separate niche of biohacking, right? That has its own separate list of vanity based drugs and own separate list of cosmetic things you can do. And you should stay away from PEDs that cause hair loss if that's your primary concern. You shouldn't be so fixated on hair loss if you truly are going down the PED performance route. And that's what drives me bonkers. It's like me being obsessed with longevity while doing all the PEDs. That makes no fucking sense. And it's the same thing with the hair loss people trying to use PEDs to get big. And they're like, oh, I'm going to take this, this, and this to offset the hair loss side effects. And, you know, I'm going to use this cycle. It's like, what you just told me is you're going to just make the performance enhancing compounds less effective. You're cherry picking compounds that aren't as good to theoretically stop hair loss, which you probably won't. Like if you get an actual hair catcher, you're going to like lose less hair. You're still not comparable to an elite niche biohacker dedicated to hair loss only when it comes to hair catching so that's that that's my rant i just like don't understand it's like you're either for hair loss you're either for longevity you're either for performance do i judge any of them no not really when i see these crisscrossy things it's like pick your poison with this shit there's side effects of the hair loss drugs these longevity drugs are fucking withdrawn they're Fucking, oh, this one doesn't work as good anymore. Oh, new data came out about this and it's bullshit. And then we all know about the fucking performance side of all the side effects of harm mitigating that. And that has nothing to do with longevity. It's going to shave years off your life. This is where it's like the hair loss thing. You're, genetic you're genetically prone to hair loss. You're genetically prone to fucking acne. And you're going to probably get one of them. Or you're going to get both of them. And if you're a hair loss guy and you think that you're going to create this elaborate cycle and this elaborate list of hair loss drugs and you're still going to go down the route of taking synthetic androgens and you're somehow going to stave off all the hair loss side effects, just accept that you're going to have hair loss if you're going down that path. It's just like they went through all that stress to document it and they're getting a half ass cycle where someone not as concerned with hair loss or some people less prone are going to reap way more reward and they're not going to be, you know, having crisscrossy methods. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. People like now that I made the PFS content, I'm not a hair 
loss guy. I've never been a hair loss guy. There's no hair loss content other than showcasing those victims are real on this channel. That's it. That's all I showcase was that that's not some made up bullshit. Those people are actually suffering. And now I'm getting all these, oh, well, how do I save my hair? You save your hair by not doing synthetic androgens and then following the hair loss biohacking community. That's how you save your hair. Don't ask me to put together this synthetic androgen cycle because even the best hair loss biohackers have all tried it. Go watch them. And it's a bunch of bullshit where you're half dipping your feet in you're either for performance, you're for longevity or you're for vanity. There's no big deal. I don't, I don't judge any of them any differently. It's all biohacking. But if you're going to crisscross, it makes no sense to me. I'll see you guys in my next video.